Welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel sponsored by Indigo Communications. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff and Tam McManus are here with me to look ahead to the three games in the Premier Sports Cup tonight and we'll also look back at last night's win for Kilmarnock which seals their place in the semi-final. There's lots of things to talk about, a manager getting sacked, a player possibly... Um, you know, will he move? Will he stay at Hibernian? Uh, one player who we haven't seen a lot of that could be featuring tonight for Rangers. Bad news for Aaron Hickey. Just a few of the topics we'll be discussing. We'll also look at the top 10 managers in the world right now in a recent poll which has just been released. Um, I'll get Ruffy and Tam's thoughts on it too. You can interact with us. It's completely free to watch us and our online football content on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. So if you get the chance, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or download the app and you'll get all the latest football news, including, of course, the chance on the app to watch the football show live. It's on there on your phone, your tablet or your PC. So lots of people actually just project it onto their television when they go into the app on YouTube. On their smart television, roughly, they can watch it on the big screen there. Yeah, some of us look a lot better than the big screen, you know. Yeah, some of us I'm don't. <laughs> so it's, it's in, it's Ultra done. HD, roughly. Yeah, no, no. absolutely. Just uh, a lot of people have been uh, obviously sending me messages and wondering, you know, basically, uh, you know, what time Ruffy was going to get to Aberdeen against Partick Thistle tonight uh, and whether he was going to be able to make that. Apparently, Tam, uh, the Bugatti Veyron can go from 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds. Um, so if it can go 0 to 60 in two and a half seconds, you can imagine that supercar charging up to Aberdeen in, in double quick time. But we, Ruffy doesn't own a Bugatti Veyron. Well, we did say on Monday that we, he wouldn't make it and... Are you going, Ruffy? No, I've been advised hey. not to. Advised <laughs> not to uh, road traffic uh, advice. Yeah, that uh, there are too many roadblocks, and because I wouldn't get away from here till maybe five past five, it wouldn't get there at about quarter past eight. So. Yeah. Fruitless journey, but, but I'm sure the boys will do me proud. Well, I think you're doing the sensible thing, Ruffy, to be. Yeah, I think that's sensible, isn't it? Tom? Yeah, you don't want to be bombing it and killing yourself going up that road. Yeah. Ruffy, you're better just watching it on Patrick Thistle TV. Absolutely. Plus, of course, uh, in the schedule all the way through to the end of the year, we don't have uh, a space for a tributes are pouring into Alan Ruff who yep. sadly didn't make it to Aberdeen I'm just, you know? waiting, that, just <coughs> waiting just to transfer myself over to that seat <laughs> five days a week five gigs a week oh. <laughs> you will feel <laughs> guilty <laughs> if that oh, does happen by the way. although I did say to somebody <laughs> I swear to God Ruffy somebody said to me today I mean Ruffy it's great love his banter and he's on the show and we've been here for ten years he said you know is he, is he going to chuck it soon I said no no I said his Ruffy's never chucking it. I says we're, yep. we're joined at the hip. I said he's he's always there in the seat. I said <laughs> even when he passes away, his weekend at Bernie's, <laughs> we're just going to hit you with a spatula. <laughs> Somebody <Yeah>. behind him. <laughs> Can Can we um, no, we're just going to keep you there, oh, right, and right. then we're just uh, a couple, couple of flies around <laughs> your head. <laughs> <laughs> and then every now and then we'll move your hand up like that to wave uh, to everybody on the show. I think it's the thing that lots of people would really, really like. <laughs> so um, here's a quiz question for today, which is obviously with the League Cup in mind. Uh, which team won the l first League Cup? Um, and if you can tell us the year that that happened as well, which team uh, won the first Scottish League Cup final? And if you tell us the year as well, just throw that in for good measure. That would be really good uh, as well. We'll give you the answer by the end of the programme, uh, which team won the first Scottish League Cup final. So couple other little things that I want to talk about before we get into the meat and bones of the quarterfinals of the Premier Sports Cup and we'll look back at last night's win for Kilmarnock in a moment uh, sad news Neil Lennon sacked <coughs> by Ammonia Nicosia don't like to see a manager lose his job um, but I think when you look back and when Ammonia Nicosia look back they'll certainly look back at a manager who's etched his name in their history it's a crazy one absolutely crazy they actually put a statement out saying he will be remembered forever for what he's done for this club and then you sack them, you know, you sack them because you're in, uh, I think, middle of the table. I think they've, they're eight points behind the leaders or something like that. I mean, it's just hard to believe, you know, but seemingly that's the, the going over there. Places like Cyprus and Malta, you know, they don't, they don't hang about and they want to win, win, win. But I think Neil's just offered them more than anybody could have given them from where they were. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he was within an ace 
of delivering a never to be forgotten result both home and away against Manchester United uh, Tam yeah I think that over both games they showed that they can compete at the highest level my United have got a squad worth 20, 30, 50 times his squad you know some real quality players and they were competitive in both games so I think he'll be disappointed I think it's very difficult for teams smaller clubs to, to play in the Europa League group stages or Conference League Thursday, Sunday we see it here with Hearts Ammonia were picking up good results good performances in the in the Europa League but struggling in the league and that's cost him his job in then yeah I think John O'Rourke who is on our feed says Lennon would have picked up points now that Europe is over yeah, for them yeah. it really is a strain Ruffy on a lot of managers I just don't understand that one you know to, to do what he did in the seven month he was there you know and won a cup as well in his, his first year he was there he won the, the local cup got them into Europe you know and, and we've already talked about the teams he's been playing against and doing particularly well and it's a, it's a really strange decision for me yeah it's um, it's a hard one uh, a little bit of good news uh, some Rangers fans would probably have looked and thought to themselves I wonder if Michael Beale would have been coming back to Rangers at some time in the future not necessarily in replacing Giovanni Van Bronckhorst but uh, sometime in the future but it looks as if he could be on the verge of a move to Wolves that's been an incredible rise yeah, it has. Listen, he's obviously went to Villa and then he's went to QPR and, and been his own man, number one. And the QPR have started well this season. You know, I think they're up in the in the playoff places. So I think the key for that is he also speaks Portuguese. Uh, he obviously coached in, in Brazil for, for a few seasons and he's picked up the lingo. And I think that's a big thing. There's a lot of Portuguese speaking players at Wolves, uh, Portuguese managers the last couple. So I think that uh, it seems to fit both parties and yeah, it would be a, a, a real rise for him. Um, because he's been heavily linked uh, to the Rangers job and a lot of Rangers supporters I think would have, would have fancied seeing him back at some point. Yeah, um, there's no doubt about it, he has something, Ruffy, certainly from a coaching capacity in, in such a short space of time. If he landed that job, yeah. I mean that is, well, I wouldn't say it's a secure job because uh, Wolves is one of those clubs where, you know, you can get the sack in double quick time, but it's a great place to actually be a failure, the Premiership in yeah. England, isn't it? Because you can become a millionaire overnight. It's a strange one as well because QPR look as if they could be going up and they could be like just waving to each other on the way down, you know. But sometimes you've got to take a gamble, and he must be doing something behind the scenes. He must be doing something that all these clubs are seeing that we're not seeing, you know. Then uh, behind the scenes, obviously, and the results on the park. So uh, good luck to him, you know. It'll be interesting to see whether he takes it. Two other little quick points before we get to uh, the footy of last night and tonight. Uh, first one is Ron Gordon again coming out, making a little statement, Tam, hopeful that Porteous uh, will sign. I like the word hopeful. It just gives people that little sense of mm, maybe grasping at straws here, but I can't see it. I can't see it either. I think they'd need to push the boat out massively. They'd need to make him the highest paid player at the club. Um, I don't know if they're going to do that, Habs. I think Martin Boyle will be on a fair packet. Um, I don't see them you know, giving them the same money. But they, they might. Um, they might see him as a, as a big asset that they could sell on and they'll, they'll push the boat out and give him as much as, as as much as they can. But I think for Ryan Portis, he probably, him and his, his agent sees his future down in England. I think, the, you know, that, that performance against Ukraine, you know, would have brought him to a lot of clubs' attention in England, whether that's Premiership or Championship. And I think he can get a lot more money down there. No disrespect to Hibs, uh, Ruffy, but I think Ryan Portis has to go to try and further his career and enhance his uh, potential because uh, uh, there was a moment there where I, I just thought he went stale at Hibs. Yeah, well, he's, he's already went on record saying he wants to get into England. He wants to test his cell against the best. And once he's made his mind up, you know, that's the first thing. But the second thing is, obviously, as Tam touched on there, whatever offer that Hibs are giving them down south will be three, four times that, you know. So, and it's a stepping stone down there. If he goes to a championship team, they might, he might do particularly well there and it might be a stepping stone to the premiership. I, I don't think he's ready for the premiership yet. That's just my opinion. So I think it would be a, a championship side. Yeah, OK. Um, bad news for Scotland. Aaron Hickey, ligament damage in his ankle. He's going to miss the friendly against Turkey. Uh, and I think it could be a while before he's back in a first-team shirt down south. Yeah, I think that, that, that is, that's bad news for him uh, and for Scotland because he came into those games there and he was a standout, you know, and he, he performed really, really well. He can play in either fullback position. He gives you a lot of balance. Um, so... Listen, he's still young. Hopefully he'll get over that quickly and get back into the reckoning because he's been doing well for Brentford and doing well for Scotland, but really, really talented player and let's hope he's back soon. Yep, fingers crossed. Uh, to the League Cup, 
last night. Uh, I think you fancied Dundee United to edge it, Ruffy. Uh, I fancied Kilmarnock. In the end, only one of us suggested 2-1, and it wasn't you. Um, no. Kelly, <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> Kelly win it. But I have to say, I've got a, a, the, the first thing that caught my eye, and I don't know if you watched it, Tom, but as the players are all coming out of the tunnel, there's a fan with a goalie glove, and he's just belting everybody as they walk out of the tunnel. <laughs> Not easy. It was absolutely fantastic, and uh, you know you're all running out, <laughs> bang. And that's a very <laughs> tight tunnel. Okay. Just, okay. You can't go anywhere, yeah. and yeah. as they're all coming out, you know I think they thought they were getting a half high five, but the, the boy's just going with his goalie glove, bang right over the top of their head. What support? What? what? What, who was he supporting? I don't know. I, I don't know. What are you calling for an investigation? The Cabana players would be going okay, but yeah. he's scalping the. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. I just looked at it and I thought, <laughs> what a bizarre situation as you're running out of the tunnel, first thing, scalp with a goalie glove. Um, but to the game itself, I mean, come on. The penalty, Liam Smith, I mean. Lafferty's claiming for it, as you would. Um, I thought the referee just made a back end of it. So did I, but I've been saying all year that that uh, hand in an unnatural place or whatever you want to call it, you know, is, is not consistent enough for me. The referees aren't interpreting it the way it should be. And, and if you watch, if you watch uh, foreign football, the defenders don't have their hands out anywhere. The defenders go into a tackle with their hands behind Yeah, I've seen a lot of players do that. They don't even attempt to put their hands out. So it's a dangerous one when you're shutting somebody down. But sometimes when you, how far away when somebody smacks the ball at you, you know. But in this particular instance, I thought the boy turned away and his hand was down by his side. So yeah. it was a cheap goal to get. And uh, I'm sure Dundee United would be upset about it. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing about Lafferty, though, even though we might not be seeing him for a, a good few months, Took his penalty well. He's he's at that point where he has a wee look. He's confident enough in his own ability. Has a wee look at where the, the keeper's starting to go. Boom, right in the corner. Yeah, he took it well. I think that'll be a good part and gift for him. Uh, for for Kamal, because I don't think you'll see him again for a while. But over the piece, I thought Kamal deserved to win. I thought they were the better team. It was disappointing, Dundee United. I know, I know they scored right away uh, after the Kamal opener, but I thought second half Kamal deserved to win the game and going to the semi-finals Dundee United poor result for them um, would have been a big financial boost yeah. good goal by call. Middleton he's playing well now yeah, he has to be settled yep listen um, took his goal well good player um, so I think Dundee United have got a lot of uh, talented players but something just, just missing at the minute um, yep. and they've got to start picking up results but for Kamarnock great result for them to get back to Hamden yeah I've got to give a mention at times when he is on his game Jordan Jones put a lovely ball in for Danny Armstrong to, to finish yeah, Danny Armstrong again. I think he scored six goals in the last ten games. So he's he's came he's came to life at Kilmarnock. He's the guy they were leading if the middle of the park or wide to get, chip in with goals. And Jordan Jones is a good player. So Kilmarnock, you know, they've, they've started to turn the corner. I think I think they start of the season they weren't playing particularly well. Um, but now the last four or five games they seem to have been stringing consistent good performances together. They should have beat St Murnet at the weekend, and uh, they won last night. So I think Derek McInnes will be happy the direction they're going at the minute. Yeah, OK. Um, Derek McInnes, I think, was not only happy with the result, but uh, complimenting the fact that he played with two number nines. We just thought with two traditional number nines and two wingers, that if we could get enough supply into the box, enough control through the game, then we could cause him problems. And I just wasn't expecting five foot four Danny Armstrong to score the winner, but I should be because he's been terrific. Yeah. Um, okay. It's very rare, actually. It's good. To, it's good to see from time to time, but it's usually one and one off now these days, isn't it? Yeah. There's lots of times that uh, you look at opposition you're playing. You know, particularly the defenders you're playing, or if there's full backs that like to charge forward, there's a lot of spaces now for strikers to, if they're comfortable moving into the areas. So yeah. no, I, 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 I would love. I, I keep saying it with Scotland. I think we should be playing two strikers all the time. Particularly at Hamden. Has the game changed so much now that that is almost extinct the way they play the game? No, I, again, I think it's who you're playing against and what kind of formation they're playing. Yeah. But particularly at home, I think if you've got the chance, you should play two strikers. Who's the best strike partnership, you, you, you think, when you go down through the years? So it's a well, tough question. Enough, I, I watched uh, 
There was a thing on Facebook today. It was so many years since we beat uh, Scotland beat England at Hamden in 1976. Yes. And Joe Jordan and Kenny Douglas just ran riot against a really quality England side. Yeah. That day at Hamden. It's funny you saying that. I was. I mean, on, honestly, I mean, I know a lot of people would say, "Oh, Peter's going to say Douglas and Rush." But the only thing I would say to you, and probably people, a lot of people who know the game inside out, uh, who watch games, and a lot of the punters who watch this program would say, well, "Wait a minute, Kenny, Kenny could drop off into into areas in the midfield mm. before he would play an out and out as an out and out strike. He plays a ten. I mean, he could play. He, he wasn't one of those guys that you thought, well, he's waiting for the flick on for Rush. He would drop in just behind and then play Rush in. Best best two I've seen York and Cole at Man United. Yeah, I think that was that's a good show. See when I see the two and I seen you know Beckham, Giggs, Scholes, Keane, that four four two that won the Champions League, won the treble. Yeah, that was the best. That's the best team I've seen. It's a good one to put out for a question. What's, yeah. what's the, best? the best one? The best one I've seen in Scotland. Go on, Bristol and Crawford. Uh, Craig Brewster and Stevie Crawford. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was. I was a, throw certain... in Sandy Clark and John Robertson. Well, why, can area. I just say to you, why didn't you throw in Jimmy Bone then? Because you mentioned to Jimmy Bone the other night there that he was yeah, one of those guys that Rob will love to play with. I wouldn't have a partner for Jimmy. No. You know, I don't think... Uh, maybe, I agree with you, you Clark and Rob oh, Way back to Party Thistle, it was, it was Jimmy and uh, Frank Coulson yeah. who played in the game. But uh, the other partnership I was thinking of, Toshak and Keegan. Toshak and Keegan, yeah. Haley yeah. McCoy, tall man. Haley McCoy is a Haley good one. McCoy's Haley McCoy. In fact, a lot of a lot of Rangers fans would say Haley and Johnston as well. Um, I mean, Mark was so good as a you know as a, the leading part of the partnership as the the front man, and then the McCoy would play off him. But Haley McCoy is a really good one. Some people say Larson and Sutton, but. They weren't, they weren't the really, was in there and all, no, there was, Yeah, uh, and again, it's great. Who, who would you have as your greatest striking partnership? Two people playing. Um, before we, obviously, from a negative point of view from Dundee United, uh, I think Liam Fox was disappointed not to make the semi-final. Uh, and I think he thought the team maybe squandered chances that they had in the game. It's a huge disappointment. Let's, let's, let's have it right. It's a huge disappointment for us, a real missed opportunity. But with the way the things are at the moment, the games are coming thick and fast. They're, they're all massive for us. Uh, we know where we are. We know where we need to get to. We know we've still got a lot of work to do. So we just need to pick ourselves up and be ready to go again for Saturday. Yep, absolutely. Dundee United out of the uh, Premier Sports Cup. Uh, I've got to read this out because a lot of people are obviously posting messages and thanks to those who will suggest uh, some uh, partnerships ever. Um, but I got a lovely message here, Ruffy, and I thought it was only right and proper that I read it out, um, which came from uh, Catherine, uh, who's out there in Spain and obviously just, just wanted to mention and she's now starting to call you Alan uh, rather than Ruffy you know I mean I know I know Moisey mentioned to somebody in the press conference the other day there uh, Dan know you well enough for you to call me Moisey <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering here because Catherine who lives out in Spain um, has just said I hope Alan makes it okay up to uh, to Aberdeen so obviously obviously a bit of care there as yes, well Ruffy yeah, for you, you we, yeah. we know it's a, it's a tough road to go particularly if, if you're in a rush yeah. so uh, well, thank you very much for that Catherine yeah, absolutely any indication I don't know if Catherine's able to do it in a feed but I wonder if there's any indication if there's a pool in Spain you know <laughs> just for the holiday just for the holiday well, when it would be there. interesting if she was from Madrid and we're going to Madrid. Oh, it would I mean, be fantastic just to link up. Yeah. Can I just say something to rub you? Rub it in. Can I, yeah, exactly. Can I just say something to you, Ruffy? Um, I mean, Catherine's a lovely uh, lady who's obviously supporting the show, and we, we're delighted she's doing that. But the guest I've got for you for lunch, I don't think we're going to be. I don't think we're going to be found wanting when we go for lunch with this very special football guest. Well, if it's the person you mentioned it to me, yes, I'm sure. Catherine would be more than happy for us to go. It's a bigger name than Stephen McGowan. It's a bigger name than Catherine. Was it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, well, Stephen McGowan's a good lad. He's, he's out there with us in Madrid, but he? he's I coming on. Great, 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 <laughs> but we are. If, if it all comes, if it all comes off, Ruffy, yes. I think he's, he's he's he one of the top thirty world players of all time. Well, anybody who's got a uh, don't give it away, Ruffy, I'm telling you. you no, I won't tell him. You might scupper the lunch. He has. Well, I'll just give a wee clue that he's got a, a restaurant in a, in a foreign country. Right, OK. He owns his own restaurant yeah. in a foreign country. OK, that's fair. That. 
that's a big clue, but certainly I'm looking forward to it. But Catherine just obviously just saying, um, hope you make the kick off, Alan. Not Ruffy, Alan, um, which is your Sunday name. A Motherwell against Celtic, what a strange kickoff time. Tam obviously highlighting the fact it's all about the telly. Um, quarter past six. Quarter past six. They'd leave the show and then hightail it. Yeah, you know? that's, that's, that's a tough one for a lot of people that are working. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there would have been a bigger crowd if it was 7.45. A lot of people just might not get there in time uh, from their work. So but it's all about, as we say, the TV companies. They want to fit both games in. So 6.15 Celtic game, 8.15 Rangers game. There's no accountability or, or taking into account supporters. Uh, it's all about the, the TV companies and the clubs making the money. Yeah, so this one, um, this is Celtic now uh, looking to try and get a bit of silverware early on. Um, there are teams out there who are obviously trying to make sure that uh, Ange Postecoglou doesn't get the bonus that he got last season uh, from winning uh, the trophy. And Stephen Hamill certainly one of them. And he reckons because Motherwell are at home, it could be different from their time at Celtic Park. This is our, this is our home game. We want to treat it like that. We want it to be different from the game that we played them at Celtic Park and, and that's a goal listen it's going to be difficult I know but we don't want to be overly focused on what they do and what they bring we are fully aware of what their what their uh, strengths are and what they've got individually um, but again the full the most focus is on us and how we conduct ourselves within the match yeah uh, one thing about Motherwell uh, Ruffy they, they allow you to play football as well they like to play football uh, themselves they made it tough for Rangers um, got themselves a wee consolation didn't quite get the equaliser they craved uh, will they cause Celtic problems? Yeah, I think they will I think they'll cause them early on uh, as usual but we know that Celtic usually come out of the traps usually get a goal in the first 10-15 minutes which could could be a setback for them so they have to pre prevent that I don't think you'll see them you know charging forward too early because as I've said Celtic are just notorious now for scoring early so you have to be solid at the back and then work on that but for me it's all about Celtic it's too much in reserve too many players fresh players coming on with something to prove uh, and it'll be a battle for Motherwell but they, they will make it a battle they have to make it a battle they have to get about the, the players that are going to hurt them and uh, that's the way ahead for them yeah, Ange Postecoglou not worrying really whether they're at Celtic Park or indeed Fir Park. Like any team, I guess, in the competition when you play away from home, and particularly in the Cup, I think we've seen that in recent years, that <coughs> there are always teams that, that sort of go on Cup runs and, and you know, do really well uh, in Cup competitions and sometimes belying their their league form. So, you know, from our perspective, it's just about making sure you know, our form has been pretty good. It's pretty, been pretty consistent over... Uh, large part of the year and when we play well play our football home or away we know we're hard to stop suddenly he's in a situation where the fringe players are giving him a problem because they're actually stepping up the boy Bernabe seems to mm -hmm. be settling in well suddenly Hak Sabinovic is somebody that everybody's starting to take notice of yeah, they have, they've come in and done well. I did Ralston to that as well. Uh, I think he, he came in and Juranovic has been off the boil, I think, uh, the last few games that I've seen. So all of a sudden, you're right, he's got competition for places, and that's what you want at a big club. You know, you want competition for places. You know, if I'm a striker and I can see, I look at the bench and I can see two or three quality players waiting to come on and take my place, and it you know, elevates your game on the pitch. You want to play well because you know you get the hook if you don't. So I think the, the more good players he's got in the competition, the better for Celtic and... I think that James Forrest will be hard to drop him. I think you'll play him again. You've got to give him a wee run in the team, I think, after his hat trick against Hibs. Uh, so there's real competition in those forward areas, and I think that will drive Celtic on to go and win the game tonight. But I think Mother will make it difficult for them. I think Mother will, the last two games, 2 1 away at Celtic and 2 1 at home, the Rangers have been in the games competitive. Yeah. And I think that will be the same again tonight. <clears throat> you think it's going to be tight? Yeah, I think it'll be 2 1, maybe Celtic, maybe 3 1, but I think Mother will win the game. Yeah. Um, I don't see it that way, Rafi. I, I just think Celtic at the moment have, have got that wee bit between the teeth again, especially against Hibs. I get the feeling that they could win by 3 or 4 tonight. If it was at home. If it was at Celtic, I would say three or four. Uh, no doubt about that. You said you three know. or four last night. Have you changed your mind? Yeah, I have a wee bit. Yeah, have what a happened wee bit. in the 24 uh, hours? Somebody, somebody held Hammy's phone you? No, 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 no. I just... Alan Burrow's phone them. I just... <laughs> 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 no, I just had a wee think about the game last night. Oh, actually. Just, uh, sort of just lying. And uh, I'm going to go three. Yeah, three. Three. <laughs> 
Three one. Three nil. Three nil. All right. Okay. Um, three nil. <laughs> you've really, you've really shifted, <laughs> shifted your position. Uh, okay. You can give us your thoughts on that. Uh, we're about to talk about Rangers against Dundee and Aberdeen against Partick Thistle. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel. We're really delighted uh, that you're following us. Great numbers, especially on the app. Lots of people downloading the app, listening to the podcast, and uh, watching on YouTube as well. So thank you to so many of you McCoyston Hately um, Brian Spence says Shevchenko and Rebrov that was a good partnership he was a Rebrov was a good player as well alongside yeah, Andrei Shevchenko yeah, he was very good yeah Matt says Henri and Bergkamp well, yeah to be fair Ber- Bergkamp kind of played off yeah but, he was, but Bergkamp was oh, magnificent was Ra- Raul and Morientes at Real Madrid they were good. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a shout as well, uh, th- and uh, a lot of people mentioned Larson and Hartson or Larson and Sutton, uh, Larson with anybody really. Uh, Bartholomew uh, said he agrees with you. York and Cole. York and Cole. See that goal they scored against Bar- was it Barcelona? Yeah. In the new camp. Yeah. That's one of the best goals I've ever seen. If you're a striker and you see that the movement, the step over, and it gives him it back. The two striker link up. It was a fantastic goal. Yeah. Champions League. Alan Wood says Jim White and Brian Lowder. Um Jim White, Brian Lowder, eh? Why are you so good? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's not a bad shout, Alan. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, thank you to so many of you who've uh, thrown up Berbatov and Robbie Keane. That was obviously at Spurs. Uh, here's a good one from Charlie who says Sturrock and Dodds. Mm-hmm. Um, David Dodds is a good player. Yeah, uh, yeah. Good, good. good I think Aberdeen done the United and Rangers he played. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that's why he ended up with Rangers. You know, yeah. because of the the goals that he scored at the other clubs. Yeah. You know, and he was a, a very very good player. Benzema and Ronaldo, can't argue with that. Yeah. One's a seven, one's a nine. You know, and then they change. What was the three? What was the three of them? They had three up front with uh, Ronaldo at Real Madrid. There was you Messi. Know. No. Was Messi Neymar Barcelona. Yeah. Messi Neymar. MSN. Yeah, yes. Suarez. Yes, yeah, Suarez. That's it. Not only far away. This is, they're not Spanish team. Absolutely, it was That's close. Well, it's close. Yeah. It's like, what was the team? Rangers, Larson and Sutton. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thanks for so many of them. And I'm going to mention this one because I think it's a brilliant shout from James Forsyth, who says, and this is for you, Rafi, because you won't be able to contribute. Bobby Graham and Willie Pettigrew. Now that was a partnership. Yep. It certainly was. Uh, again, uh, not a. Uh, Willie do know that obviously the the running and, and as fast as anything yeah, was he? And and McGraham had all the skill in the world and I'm sure the Motherwell supporters would, would remember them eagerly. Yeah, yeah, Willie had a terrific My uncle played in that scoring team. record. The Mick McManus, not the wrestler, Michael McManus. My yeah. uncle played there was a winger for Motherwell, yep, playing yeah. that team with Willie Pettigrew. Yeah, what a p I mean, I'll tell you they were a great team and I remember them actually uh, you know, defeating Celtic at Celtic Park in the mm-hmm. Scottish Cup, I think it was. And Graham and Willie Pettigrew were absolutely I've got one for magnificent. The supporters. Go on. Uh, Burke and McCormick. Right, okay. The Barton supporters are there, there two strikers. Yep, I prefer Burke and Hare. Well, I was just about to say, you Ruffy appealing to such a broad spectrum of people watching the show there. <laughs> well done, Ruffy. Um, okay, um, what about yourself? You're not going to actually drive up, which I think is a sensible thing, Ruffy, because a lot of a lot of people were concerned about your uh, about your drive up there, and you're not going to make the journey, but you'll be watching on, and Jerry, Jerry Britton will keep you posted on it. The Dons want to end an eight-year wait for a trophy. Um, which Jim Goodwin, if he could do that, he would suddenly just be, again, given even more time to build the squad that he wants to. Uh, your boys, I, I, I'm going to be going to play the devil's advocate here and say I'm not sure that the the real desire is for a long run in the cup. Uh, yeah, you're right. But uh, in, in football, you want you want to win all the time. You know, you want to win. You know, every game you go into. You know, we're we're in a step up in class for where we are in the championship, there's no doubt about that. And and Jim Goodwin's right. This Aberdeen team need to be getting semi finals and finals every year. No, every six or seven. You know, the fans demand it up there. So that'll be their goal tonight to get into the, the semi final. It's, it's not the end of the world for us. You know, we want to be in there, we want to be in the premiership and it's game tonight and then a big game on Saturday you know it's, it's hard shift for the championship yeah. teams I'll tell you, we were talking about players coming back for um, you know the, the Aberdeen Partick Thistle who you've got available um, is, it, is it maybe first team players that he might want to rest with the league in mind well, especially with yeah, well, then, yeah I mean the Queen's Park game on Saturday is a massive massive game particularly with Inverness getting beat last night you know if we win 
on Saturday we could go six points clear of a lot of our rivals, you know, so I don't know whether Ian would see that in his team selection as a headache, but I'm sure all the players will want to play. Yeah. But there will be players who play the night, possibly won't play on Saturday. OK, um, so before we talk about Rangers against uh, Dundee, Ian Miller has come up with a cracking two. Again, sorry, uh, Tam, but sometimes some of the people who are slightly older who recognise good partnerships uh, long before you were born, uh, Ian Miller says, Miller and Brand, which you will not be aware of, which was, I think, was Jimmy Miller and Ralph Brand. Yeah, uh, Rangers, 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 they were fantastic. And there is a point, Ruffy, when eventually, once people have actually named the normal ones, you get people <laughs> who are just sitting at their telly <laughs> on their computer and they've lost the will to live. <laughs> so they start coming up with stupid ones. Well, you know, gosh, and gosh. you know, and there are people who've never seen a good partnership, so they just thought, okay, so we, we've had a <laughs> Gregor says Cammy Fraser and Hugh Burns, right? Nah. No. Um, Batman and Robin uh, and <laughs> <laughs> then Martin Hanley, who's just clearly decided I'll have a chaser with the can, has got malt and lava. <laughs> he just lost the plot. Uh, Spider Man and Iron Man. Martin um, and Ruff. Yeah, it's just, it's gone. It's got, it's just gone. Martin and McManus has got a better ring. Aye. Yeah. Uh, Eminem. It is. It's Martin and McManus, yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, some people have just Who lost the Who was uh, the big man for Argentina when they won the World Cup? Who Kempes. was his partner? Luque. Was Coupe and, oh, Coupe Luque. and Luque. Oh, yeah. wow. No, Kempes, Kempes and Luque. Luque. Oh, what a partnership Coupe they were. Coupe and Luque. <laughs> Luque, Luque, man. <laughs> You're unbelievable. Kempes and Luque were fantastic as well. Um, so... Thank you very much to quite a lot of you who've posted in your partnerships and then just lost it completely. Rangers against Dundee. Uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, obviously being asked the question, now wait a minute, you've got players who haven't kicked a ball for you um, and players that maybe um, are going to be out injured. Will you have the ability and the flexibility and the finance to get there in January and sign some players? This is what he had to say uh, on that very subject. Well, depending depending the status of the players, it's still uh, a couple of months away. So we need to see when, uh, whenever the windows opens. There for sure, you know, when we see the squad, you know, we can identify positions we need maybe to strengthen up. But uh, for now, we know this is the squad we we have until uh, until January. So um, that's now my main focus. I mean, both managers, both uh, Ange Postecoglou and Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, will be hoping they've got some sort of uh, money able to go and get one or two to strengthen their case for that run-in. Um, I think the pressure might be slightly more on Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, not just because they're a couple of points behind, but I think there's Rangers fans looking and thinking it's not a settled side. There's, there's areas that need strengthening, especially when you look at some of the players that are out. Yeah, they were very fortunate when they got to the final of the Europa. It was basically the same 11 nearly week in, week out. He's not had that uh, luxury this year. So, yeah, you have to wait uh, until January, as he says there. Assess the players who are injured, how many are back, and then they really ha he really has to go to the board and say, look, if you really want to be in the Champions League again next year, you need to give me money to strengthen whatever position it is. Well, uh, the, the classic example here is Kimar Roof is coming back. There's a wee chance that he'll get a run out tonight, uh, Tam, but uh, Rudvan Yilmaz, not just 88 minutes in two games. Yeah, that's, it, it doesn't re reflect well on the recruitment team. I think when you bring in a player like that for a reputed, what, four or five million pound, then he's got to be a, he's got to be a starter. And Rangers fans have not seen Heighton or Herium. You know, he's not been in the team at all, so... I think uh, I think if he's not in the team and getting some game time, you know, in the next couple of weeks, I think they'll be looking to shift him out on loan, maybe back to Turkey, or try and get some some money back because. Well, he says he's not going out on loan, so that tells you everything about. Yeah, well, it. They'll, they'll, they'll maybe try and offload him because you know, I don't think Barisic has been in top form this season. And I think there's been chances for Yilmaz to get an opportunity, and the manager just maybe maybe just doesn't fancy him. So I think there's a. You know, it's a big outlay for a guy to be sitting in the stand or sitting on the bench every week. Here's a big question for you, and I hate to bring it up again because we've been talking about it for three or four years, but this window's coming up in January. Does he sell Kent and Morelos? They're in the last six months. Does he take the chance and say, I'm going to hold on to them on the basis that they can win as the title? Possibly. I think that uh, in, in terms of Ryan Kent, I think his place is, is going to be under threat soon. I don't think he's playing well enough to... 
you know, to, to be in the team every week. I thought he was poor against Mother at the weekend. You know, the couple, couple of opportunities, his confidence looks low. Um, Morelos, I think both of them will be, will be away in the summer. I think it's time for them to, to move on now. Uh, I don't think that Rangers would be that keen to deal Kent in the way he's playing. Morelos, I think, maybe different, but he's been in and out of the team as well. So I think that I think Rangers have got bigger priorities and getting the two tied up. I think they'll just be looking to try and get better quality in. Do they keep them? Depends how much money they get offered in January. And who's buying them? Is is Morelos a champ? A champ? He's a champ. For me, he's, he's bottom premiership. He's championship, bottom end premiership. I don't think Ryan Kent's premiership. I think Ryan Kent's championship. Uh, I don't think his end product, his numbers, his goals, assists, you know, would get him into the Premier League. I had a strong feeling in my mind, Ruffy, that had Ryan Kent really grasp the opportunity of Anfield he could have really posted to a number of clubs mm-hmm. by the way this is what I'm capable of both you know, games he, he, well in both mm-hmm. games but especially when you go down to Anfield and if you can do something a wee bit special suddenly people go well if you can do that at Anfield mm-hmm. we might take a chance on him he could have been bottom end Premier League because the bottom end of the Premier League is where I think club managers and chairman and chief executives start to get erratic and stupid with their money because they're so desperate to stay in the league and they start saying, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give you £8 million for this guy. Well, there's no doubt about it. He's, he's an exciting player, uh, but he's not lived up to what, what we were all thought he was going to do. I think Rangers, when they bought him, what was it, £7 million or something like that? Run about that. When they bought him for £7 million, they were projecting he was going to be a £15 million pound player. Yeah. And, and and everything we saw early on looked as if, well, that is the case, that's a good buy, but I, I don't know if you would get £7 million for him now. No chance. You know, no unless ch- it's no, a big club it. when they throw money about, but yeah. no. he's not, he, his valuation hasn't went up the way, it sort of went down the way, but he's still a, he's still a player, if you're, if you're a supporter of a team, on his game, you would pay money to go and see. Well, there's no money I don't about. think anybody would pay one or two million for him in January. For Kent? No, no you get more than that. You get more you, than he's that. out of contract in, in the summer. They get him for nothing. You sign him yeah. in a pre contract. Well, I, I phoned him. Uh, what many goals has he scored this season? Two? He's he? not been great. Like oh, the scouting networks now, the big clubs are all, they're all looking at numbers, goals and assists, end product. And he's a good footballer, talented, but he's end product. You know, there's no clubs in the Premier League are going to go, right, he's going to get us 5 10 goals and t- 5 10 assists. If he's not doing it in the Premier no disrespect to your league, but well, you would think it's would, harder down there than yeah, it is here. Yeah, you would think he'd be doing it in our league. You think you in our in our league would be scoring 10, 15, yeah. 16. Yeah, he's only scored one goal um, so far. Uh, I spoke to Charlie Adam last night. He's worth 32 million. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I miss Charlie, do you? I really do miss oh. Charlie. Just for the inflated... We can update, we can update what he's doing. Ah, he's, he's, he's got a new job. He's got a new job. What is he? He's a loans coach. Burnley, under-23 Burnley, coach and yeah. loans, loans manager. It's good, loans, isn't it? Yeah. Loans, yeah. Is he pricing players? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be trying to get Ken for the under 23 he's an yeah. overage player. Um, but nevertheless, I do miss Charlie just for the fact that no, his valuations are mental. Oh, oh, they really Remember bad. Edward? Edward. <laughs> Two million. Yeah. And then eventually, two Quenji Cups and a kick cat. It was brilliant. Um, but uh, we miss him. We wish him well. Rangers, I don't see any problem with Dundee whatsoever. I think Rangers will win by, by three. Yeah, I think I think Dundee have got to sit in and try and make it difficult as possible. They they cannot come out and have a go at Rangers. So I, I'm I'm going to give them the bef- benefit of the doubt, and I'm yeah. going to go three nothing Rangers. Yeah, what, what benefit of what doubt? Well, I could have said four, four or, five or five or six, but I'm not going to. Right, okay, Tom. I would hope my old club Dundee would get a result, but I don't I don't really see it. What? But I know you would hope, but no. Yeah. I'll go for rough. I think three or four nothing. Okay. Um, Willie Collum is the man in the middle for the first Scottish Premiership game covered by VAR. So suddenly Willie is going to get that chance uh, to have a, a helping ear and eye um, because the VAR team will be there at the, the headquarters uh, that I visited last week, Tam. Uh, and they'll be able to look at it. It's a brilliant setup. And can I just re-emphasise to everyone and anyone who would listen on this, this is not the SFA or the SPFL scrimping and saving and trying to do a botched job. This is state-of-the-art technology all there, 
up to the standard that FIFA require, if not better in some aspects because of the, the space they've got, the technology in place. Um, and of course, the training now that uh, Crawford Allen has been able to, to do extensively with a number of referees now trained in VAR. So quite simply, you know, Greg Aitken and lots of other uh, officials will be helping out and saying, I think you should have a look at that again. And I think it'll be a tremendous help to Willie Collum. It will not eradicate some things that I think we'll, we'll still look at and say, no, that's a poor decision because there is still a human element to it. Yeah, there is. But I think you know, your big decisions, your last man, you know, red cards, offsides, you know, disallowed goals. I think the big decisions that you're, we're going to get right now. And I think that's that's vital. The referee's in the hand. You know, it's a very, very difficult, you know, job. You know, and they only get one look at it, a split second. You know, if a tackle in the box, it's a split second to make a decision. This time, you know, as you said, they can have a look, go through to Willie Collin, listen, well, you might have got that one wrong, have a look at it again. And they can get the, they can come together and get the right decision. And I think that's for the benefit of supporters, players, everyone. You know, you want to see the big decisions being correct uh, and not coming off the part thinking, well, the referee's cost is a win or cost is a point. Um, so I think that uh, I think it's going to be good for Scottish football. We hope the, the fans are show a little bit of patience. You know, the SFA have said that it might take, you know, two or three months to get up to speed. It was the same in England. You know, if you remember, it was taking three, four minutes to get a decision at the start. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of technology, a lot of uh, to and fro, and so. I think it will take a little bit of time to get it bang on, uh, but it's good that it's actually eventually here now. Well, Michael Ross certainly doesn't agree with us. State of the art, Peter's talking garbage. Um, that's fantastic, Michael. If you just send us, <laughs> send us the pictures and the interviews that you conducted there and the knowledge of the technology that's in place at the uh, setting, uh, then I would be delighted with that, Michael, in your own time, um, because they, they have... Uh, a brilliant setup there. They can communicate. Um, there are only four grounds um, in the Scottish Premiership that don't have the big screen, so the announcer will have to relay the decision on the VAR there. I think Kilmarnock's one of them. Certainly, Hibs have got it. Uh, Mother was another one. And what do you mean announce it? Well, the the public address system they'll announce the decision so from. Got a big TV. They, they don't have a it. huge TV screen with a VAR mm. logo and saying. Goal, no goal, goal, yeah, no sure goal. The referee, when he does it, he does that, and then he goes. If he goes to a... if he goes to look at it after yeah. the decision is made, yeah, you know. So, um, you know, uh, there, there are only four grounds, but the rest of them all have the big screens, and I think it's only a matter of time before the four clubs do indeed invest in it as well. So, I, I think it's for the best. I think that there will still be an area of anger with some fans. Yeah, there will be. I think that, uh, but. <laughs> They're going with the rules, you know. It's no, there's no, there's no, there's no. It's black or white. There's no grey. It's they're going with the rules. The referee has has given them. The guys back in the VAR room will tell them it's a, it's a penalty or no penalty or whatever. You know they're going by the the rule book. So well, the that, big, most the of the big decisions. Here, that had to be that point. Who is making this decision? Is it the guys that he's talking about? Is it left to the referee? If the guys in the studio say, "I think you better have a look at this because I think it's this." No, 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 what happens? What happens if the referee doesn't agree with them? No, no, what happens? Yep. The, the, the referee is there. There are certain decisions that will be made that are factual. Mm -hmm. um, that, that There is a fact that the referee the has, has to actually look at and say, right, OK, I've got to go with what you've said. But what will happen is, basically, the three officials will be looking at it. They have the angles. They have all the angles on the cameras that are in the grounds. Um, and from those angles, they have... A, a situation of being able to look at and they will basically say delay, delay, delay um, because we're having a look at a decision there is a possible penalty decision here or that, you know, there was you know something in the, the offside in the build-up to that goal um, so then at that point they will relay that to the referee and say I think you should have a look at it the referee will then go to the VAR have a look at the decision from the angles that are then played played out to him right. and from there he will make that ultimate call but there are a couple of areas where it is absolute fact and he'll have to take their word on it so Ruffy is it going to eliminate all the problems no the the best way I can sum the VAR up is it is getting a greater percentage of the decisions right. The big ones. It's the big ones. That's all you want, isn't it? Yeah, you do. You know? So, uh, but we'll, 
Will, people, your money. will people stop slaughtering them in the VR offices? No chance. The, the first old farm game is going to be brilliant. Oh. It's going to be, if there's a big decision in that game. It's going to be fantastic. I cannot wait for it. Um, so... We, we shall wait to see exactly how it all pans out, but I'm welcoming it, uh, and it'll be great to see on this programme how everybody reacts to Friday night, yeah, um, because if there's, a, if there's a big call, and as you say, I cannot wait for January the 2nd, that game will just be there bananas. Might be, there might be umpteen decisions in that game, there might be plenty about 6 o'clock at night, uh, yeah. but no, I, 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 think it's, I think it's for the best. As I said in this show before, the only thing that I don't like about it is the, uh, is the goals. You know, you go and have, have a look at a goal, you've not got that euphoria of a supporter at the game live, bang your team scores, you know, because you maybe just think that it might be offside, might be something wrong with Man City game at the weekend, they're a, a big example of that, so that's the only thing I don't like about it, it takes away the joy of that immediate, you know, euphoria of scoring the goal, but f for the rest of it I think it's great. Yep. Okay. Um, listen, we want we want the game to be better. Uh, we want some of the big decisions called correctly, and if we can get there with this, all well and good. Um, OK, uh, from there, English Premier League. Brighton and Nottingham Forest was a complete yawn at 0-0. Um, Brighton should have won. Yeah, but uh, at the end of the day, I don't think draws are going to do them any, any good. Nottingham Forest, they need to try and get out of the mire. Um, Crystal Palace, good win uh, against Wolves. Whether Wolves have Michael Beale as their new manager, only time will tell. But there are some tasty games uh, to look forward to, uh, Ruffy, uh, in the English Premier League as well. Liverpool West Ham is certainly one that you would cast your eye on, uh, Ruffy. Manchester United against Tottenham uh, is another. Yeah, I think Man United, uh, Tottenham. Everybody's waiting to see if they they are going to continue to pick up points, Man United, and and move up that league. But I think for me, unfortunately, everybody's looking at managerial positions and two of them in particular, the Aston Villa and the Leicester game. Yeah. Because it, I keep saying, you know, either one of these two start. To lose a game could be the last one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. The Chelsea game will be interesting as well. They've picked up, they've picked, I think, they're four or five wins in their own. Mm. Potter's starting to, to wave his magic wand now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't worry about them. He throws them in every now and then. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get a little bit of tumbleweed to come across the screen when he when he does a rotten gag. Uh, but he was determined to get it in. Um, of course, Manchester United against Tottenham will be a cracker. Antonio Conte, uh, I think he's not too worried about the, the United he's facing at the moment. It's a different United. And for Ten Hag, the big decision is, of course, on Ronaldo. This period is not uh, a lucky period for United. If you compare, if you compare this period on um, ten years ago, because uh, only two years ago, don't forget that uh, United uh, fought uh, to win the Premier League and they finished second behind uh, behind City. No player is happy when he get off, and especially not Ronaldo. I understand that. Uh, if, as long as it is in a quite normal way. Uh, no problem over that. Uh, he has, of course, he has the convincement. Um, he should stay on and he should score a goal. Uh, that is why he's that, that good. Ten Hag just uh, saying, you know, Ronaldo has to convince him that he's at times even worthy of staying on the park. Sometimes he's getting substituted and he's not happy at that. But that's fine if Man United are winning out of the park with the other players they've got. But I think Ronaldo is, I mean, okay, he's not the player he was, but. My God, Ruffy, I would never have him mm. off the park. No, because he does something special, you know, and, and there's not many club, clubs have got players like that. But uh, we all know the game's moved on now. There has to be some kind of work rate or some kind of pattern to your selection, you know, and sometimes when you're in a team that's not doing particularly well, he's the, they're the guys who suffer. And it looks as if that's the case at Man United. But here, here's a quick question. How many uh, foreign managers are in the English Premiership? or rather how many British managers are there in the English Premiership? Yeah, Tom and I give in, how many is there? No, I've thrown that out to you, to <laughs> the experts. <laughs> you can't give a, you can't put a question if you don't know the answer. Yeah, absolutely. You can. How can you? you I've gotta, just done it. <laughs> well, you've got to know the answer to it. You can't just throw that in no, with I'm 10 done, minutes just, left. I've just I've thrown it out. I don't, don't, and don't what's really your problem with right. it? What's your problem Nothing, with it? I'm just interested. I'm sure some people might yeah, well, be you've interested got great, as well. Got, just, yeah, well, you've got Graham well, Potter. Well, I would say about maybe four, four or five, yeah, and then there, yeah. 
such an idiot. You're a chip. Uh, anyway, we'll find out. I'll have a look at that for tomorrow. Um, we'll be talking in greater detail tomorrow about the results from the uh, Premier Sports Cup to see exactly how it all panned out. Uh, and then on tomorrow's programme, of course, Thursday with uh, Tam Cowan, we will be discussing uh, the VAR in greater detail um, and of course you can give us your thoughts on that as well uh, just before we just before we go before we give you the quiz answer um, Ange Postecoglou in uh, a poll ranked 30th best manager in the world um, can you give me the can you give me the managers in the top 10 Ruffy and Tam I'd probably give you the first two and yes, after top that three. Big yeah, go on at, then at the first I would Ancelotti. I would have said Ancelotti, but it's probably Pep. Ancelotti, yep. so Guardiola. Two. Guardiola. And? Um, yeah. I think who else? In the last five years, I mean, it's not too difficult, is it? Okay. <laughs> right. we'll, we'll, we'll well, let, let me give you a Conte. Bit. Conte. Uh, no, uh, he's four. Uh, of course. I'd... Pochettino? No. Uh, it's Pep Guardiola, Carlo Pochettino. Ancelotti, Jurgen Klopp. Um, he has won the Champions League, for God's sake, and the league. Jumping Jeez, please. Antonio Conte, um, who's won nothing with Tottenham. Uh, Stefano Pioli of AC Milan. Uh, Mikel Arteta's in at number six. I'm not sure. Um, Napoli. Coming Tremendous. to it. Coming to it. Um, Mikel Arteta. Seven is Thomas Tuchel. Eight is Graham Potter. At nine is uh, Julian Nagelsmann. Bayern Aye. and number 10 is Diego Simeone and Simeone's over a long period of time really put mm -hmm. Atletico Madrid on the map um, I always like to give you out these 10 um, it's always good to look at these lists isn't it Robbie? who is who is first and second uh, Guardiola and then Ancelotti but for no, me it's Ancelotti, Ancelotti. For I mean, me it's Ancelotti by a mile absolutely but uh, listen that's what lists are about it's about disagreeing with them arguing by a with mile. them yeah. look at the, he's won nearly every league in Europe oh, uh, yeah uh, anyway uh, Gary Hawthorne Jose Mourinho no exactly Gary Hawthorne says who was the last English manager to actually win the uh, Premier League in England um, English I don't think there's been an English manager that's won the Premier League there's a that I think English or British English, English. no English because Fergie's absolutely uh, dominated it but I wish one ever black one yeah I don't think there's been an English manager that's won the Premier League it's a good question isn't it? I mean Howard Kendall won it in 92 eh uh, um, Howard oh, Wilkinson. Leeds, Wilkinson, Leeds United manager. Been that far back? Well, that's 92, but that wasn't the arrival of the Premiership. Um, so I don't think there's anybody. So interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Col Colin Stewart says Potter this. in the top 10. What a pile of <laughs> Colin <laughs> I'm yeah, just reading Rogers. you the list. Rogers. Rogers. He's, not no, he's not there. Um, and, and I think Gallant summed Irish. it up. England's greatest ever manager was a Scotsman. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and of course, when you look back, when they were waiting for uh, a British person to win Wimbledon, Ruffy, it was a Scot. Yes. <laughs> we're, at the heart, we're at the heart of everything. Now he was British when he won it and he was Scottish when he was gu guff. <laughs> <laughs> Remember? Yeah. Let's not go down that road for the answers. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy the football tonight. Ruffy is staying in the house. Uh, the answer to the quiz question, and it was, it was quite a toughie. Which team won the first Scottish League Cup final, Ruffy? It had to be in the nineteen sixties. Nineteen sixties? No clue. It was nineteen forty six, forty seven. You were twelve. Oh, How did you know? Remember first that Scottish League Cup final, uh, and it was between Rangers and Aberdeen, and Rangers won it four nothing. Oh. So there you are. But there are not many people get that right. There will not be. There's a couple who actually oh, obviously Googled it. were you then? 12? I wasn't thought of then. Yeah, so uh, it's one of those things. Uh, okay, thank you very much to uh, most of you uh, for uh, your points of view on the programme today. We try and read out as many of them as possible. Um, some who obviously... Uh, some who obviously don't like what they're uh, what we're talking about today and are getting slightly miffed. But listen, that's the joy of it all. That's what football's all about. Thank you to you all for contributing. Uh, from Tom McManus, Ruffy, myself, Peter Martin. Hit the subscribe button, join the football family, and we'll see you tomorrow to discuss the Premier Sports Cup results.